Hi, my name is Hitham Mistry. Um, I'm 20 years old and I'm a student and a Bharatanatyam dancer. Um, I performed my Arangetram in the year of 2010, in February, seven months ago actually to the state. And um, for me, um, Arangetram literally meant um, the initial stage of my career, I mean, the beginning of dancing. I mean, I, wanna, I, I aspire for professional standards and to perform on stage as a male soloist because there, in this country there are not many male soloists and um, I have a special passion for Bharatanatyam, a special craziness. And um, initially, actually, I wasn't planning to do my Arangetram. I wanted to um, just dance as um, learn and just do a formal performance, not anything stated as the Arangetram. But um, when I went to India, I took a gap year to India in 2009. And there, people would ask, oh, have you done your Arangetram? And I'll be like, um, no, I've not done it. I, I've not done mine, but I do plan to do a performance. They're like, oh, you should do Arangetram. You know, it's like a really big thing. I mean, the whole preparation, and it's meant as a very big um, transition. So after that, I decided I should do a formal Arangetram. So then um, I returned, and I'm, I returned to UK in November 2009 and um, I started my rehearsals with my Guruji, Srimati Pushkala Gopal, who lives in Ilford. And I trained for, I think it was four and a half months. And my Arangetram was on the February 21st, um, which is a Sunday in 2010. And the significance of this date was um, that it was, I believe in, um, me and my family, we believe in Sri Aurobindo, which is like a, a, a sect and a cult in India. Of Aurobindo was a great uh, philo uh, philo philosophist, and he um, had an almeta or a partner called the mother. Now, the, on the 21st of February is actually the mother's birthday, and um, the significance of the mother in my life is, has been since, I mean, before I was born. Uh, mother of, my mom used to have dreams of a mother holding a baby boy, and um, I think, I think two, three weeks later, she found out she was pregnant. And then nine months later, then I came, a boy. So my mom said, um, you do your Arangetram on the 21st of February because um, mother gave me to you, uh, gave, me to, gave me you as a gift. And as you want to surrender yourself to dance your whole life, you should do your um, Arangetram on her birthday. So I did that. So it's been seven months today. Today is the 21st of February, sorry, 21st of September. And I have a show today at the, at the Nehru Center. So it's, it's a bit um, nostalgic for me, this date. The 21st is a very significant date. And um, yeah, so um, yeah. Um, I just say it's a significant date so I can cut that bit out. It's a significant date for me, the 21st of February. And um, yeah, um, Arangetram is, it is actually as, as heavy as the word sounds. It is as demanding. You have to put in the hours of practice. Um, you start off slowly, slowly, because your body has to slowly get used to the practice. I mean, I came back from India, so I was already kind of in the zone of that training. But obviously, it kind of fizzled down because of my routine here. Of I joined university, and I started. I did my first year of uni and my earning at the same time. So uh, the training of it. So um, I first started off with about six hours of practice per week. Then it went on and on, and then every day I would do um, of my own personal practice at least two hours because you have to go through all of the pieces. Then I used to go to technique classes with um, a very expert professional, Maven Koo. Um, I used to go to his classes every Wednesdays, and that, that would be a grueling two-hour class of technique, Paratanatyam Adavus, which are like basic dance steps. Um, I, would, I would train with him, and then I'd come home the next day, morning, do my practice, go to uni, come back, do, do some more practice. So it was at least... As you build up to it, it was four hours a day, at least three to four hours. If not, if you didn't have the time in the day, you had to do your Varnam, which is the central piece in the Bharatanatyam uh, repertoire, and the Tillana. Uh, my teacher would say, do these two items every day if you don't have time to do anything else. So I would do that. So it kind of, you have to build it up, and the training is very, very difficult. Um, I used to do lots of gym work, I used to do lots of running, um, lots of leg presses, lots of weight work to kind of give me more strength in my body. Um, and obviously you have the money aspect, which is, it's a very um, expensive thing, having your Arangetram. I was fortunate enough to have my parents, um, my father and my mother, um, supporting me and paying for my Arangetram, which I don't think a lot of um, kids do have. I mean, I know, I know a lot of, um, of my own 
um, dance friends who had to pay for their engagements themselves and they waited till they, they had work. So I was very lucky in that sense and I'm very thankful to my parents to have paid for my engagement and constantly supporting me. And uh, with me, I think, um, uh, boys uh, don't tend, tend to take up Bharatanatyam. So uh, a girl has a supportive mother. I've always had a supportive father. My father's been like the backbone of my training. He's always um, supporting me and saying, um, you want to dance? Do you go dance? Um, don't worry, I'll pay for it. You, uh, you do it. Because I don't know, he's, he, saw the, he saw my passion and he saw my dedication. Um, I would come home and practice. And people, um, after I did small, small performances in my place in Leicester, I'm originally from Leicester. So when I used to do small performances there, people would say, oh, no, he's good. And they used to say these good things and he used to feel good. So like that, he encouraged me. Uh, my mom was a little apprehensive because of what um, family, being Indian, family is a big, uh, you know, why is he dancing, you know, everyone else is going off to uni, he's gone to India, there was this whole thing, so um, mum was a little apprehensive, but she's always been supportive, but I think my dad's been the pillar of support throughout my whole training, so um, even today, um, before my programme, I've, well, two hours ago, he, he left a message on my phone saying, um, tried to get in touch with you, sorry I couldn't get hold of you, but good luck for tonight. This is your first solo after your Aringitram, and do well, and it's just, hearing those words from him is, you just feel like okay, you're reassured and you, f you feel the confidence and yeah, uh, so I'm very lucky to have um, very supportive parents and yeah, so the Arangetram and obviously um, another side of the Arangetram is the Guru Shishya relationship. Now obviously your Guru, gu your guru guides you throughout the whole process. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have a Guru like Srimati Pushkala Gopal um, who, is a, who is a highly trained expert in Paratanatyam. I mean she lived her years as a dancer when she was in Delhi. And in India, in Chennai, I mean, she was born and raised in Chennai. But um, her guidance uh, was absolutely fantastic because here's a woman who, um, who's lived a life of a performer, who's learnt the dance style properly, acquired it correctly from gurus, the Dhananjayans, who are based in Chennai, who have an institution called Parthe Kalanjali, whom I also went to in my gap year. So her guidance, um, was on a very broad level. It was dance technique on one side. Then we had the, um, in Bhartanatya, more in Indian dance, we have the use of the face, which is the Abhinaya. Now she's, I think in the UK, I've, I've been to a lot of teachers here, but she was the only one who kind of focuses on the aesthetics of the face and makes you aware of what you're doing with the face. So um, it was the Abhinaya and dance technique together, um, which make a whole round thing. And she also, she, she's also a Carnatic vocalist. So, I also got to know a lot about ragas, about music, how to um, say my um, dance jatis, which are like uh, dance units, which we say sholakattas, which are the dance syllables. Also that she made us um, say them correctly. And um, so it was a whole round thing. It wasn't just one aspect, just dancing, no. It was how to be, how to present yourself as a dancer on stage. So I think she's, she gave us um, correct training for the Arangitram. I think the best for UK. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it because she's my teacher, but I've been around and I've, I've seen Arangitrams, I've seen teachers, and I've seen how, the way how they train. And um, so, yeah, uh, correct guidance is very important. So I, my advice to those who are planning to do the Arangitram is go to a guru um, who's, a, who's an expert at Pratanatyam or who has seen and experienced and been out there. Um, obviously, with everyone, it's not the case, but um, I was lucky enough to have this, so, yeah. And also being in, in an atmosphere with people who are inspiring. Maven Koo, who, who was kind of like a mentor at the time, um, at Technique, he was very inspiring. Oh, no, you have to practice this, do this in this way. No, we have to do Technique. This whole, and the whole ideologies and theories and how to do dance Technique came from him. Then the performing aspect, my, my Arangitram items. Um, the thing with Pushkala Aunty, Pushkala Gopal, is that she has, um, she creates a special margam for, for each and every one of her students for the Arangitram. Now my Arangitram, because I'm a Gujarati boy, is um, it was, I had a lot of special North Indian pieces, which you wouldn't normally have in a Pratanati margam. Um, I had a Gujarati piece in my second half, which my, uh, of a song which my mom loved. Um, I, did, I did a Hindi Varnam. Now, Varnams are normally in Tamil. I did one in Hindi, which was based on Shiva. And it was a Shiva Navarasa Varnam, which is the nine emotions of Shiva in, in his stories. So she had created a special repertoire for me, um, which is quite special. I don't think many gurus do that. 
I think they just kind of tend to use whatever's available on the market in terms of compositions, what's popular, what's not popular. But my Arangetum was uh, catered and the programs were um, planned out so my audience could relate to it and I could relate to it. And that was important. And she also gave me the freedom to, um, in her, she had set certain things in choreography, but she'd given me the freedom to think as to, okay, where do you want to place this character in this Sanchari, which is like a, a, a imaginational story in which where you take a line and you kind of expand on it. So she gave me the, the space to think, okay, how do you want to, how do you want to characterize it? There were some sections in my Varnam, in my Gujarati piece where I was, where I kind of set certain things and choreographed hands to what I thought was good and then she would make corrections. I mean, even now, um, now that I've kind of started to perform or started to kind of urging out to be a dancer, she kind of encourages on her, do, you, you set this one chord where you did this. So it's really important to kind of have a, a teacher who kind of gives you initiative as well, not just always guiding and um, not setting anything which is not a part of your body. So yeah, the Guru and another part of the, the actual relationship in itself with the Guru and Shishya, you have to listen to what the guru says because whatever they say, they have the experience and they know what's good, what's, what's not good, what's right, what's wrong. And um, it's good to listen to them. I mean, when you don't listen to them, you, you do get certain um, things that go wrong. And I experienced the same thing in my area I mean, um, I didn't listen to her in um, or calling a technician man. So because I had um, friends who were going to come and do tech, tech, um, my tech work for me on the day but uh, the, one of the men had come late. Um, one of my speakers had blew up one hour before the performance on stage monitor. So there was a lot of tension, lots of big fiasco, lots of commotion before the Arangate room. Some of the musicians weren't happy because they didn't have a monitor. I mean, you have to have three monitors on stage when you, when you have live music. And Arangate rooms are done with live orchestra also. So you have that cost and you have to handle with handle the musicians, the logistics of calling them to rehearsals and having, um, I had four rehearsals during my Arangate trip in, um, in the week. So my Arangate was on a Sunday. I had four rehearsals before that. Each of the four rehearsals were four hours long. So um, you can imagine by, by the time I'd performed my Arangate trip, you are absolutely out of energy and it's very important to kind of, after the, the four hour rehearsals, to have a good rest, to have, um, lots of glucose, eat properly. So it's, it's an experience, um, but it's an experience which I've learned from. I mean, now when I watch my Arangetrum video, I mean, the first time I watched my video, I, I couldn't um, watch it. And my, I sat down with my parents, the DVD, DVD went in, I saw the first two minutes and I just ran away. And mom was like, why are you running? I said, I can't watch this, it just looks too, too, too bad because I hadn't done a full margam before and it was my first performance. So I watch it now and I think, okay, I, I could do this. I mean, you learn from it. You have to look at what you've done and you have to see, okay, I, I could do this different, this different. For me, it's really important um, after every performance, I have to watch myself and I have to say, okay, look, I've done this wrong. Well, this is right, this is nice. See what to keep, see what not to keep. So I've started doing that now after, after my Arangate room. So the, whatever perform small performances, media shows that I did, I've had them recorded and I make sure I'm developing each time. And that's how you get, I, I think that's how you grow as a dancer. But for me, it was, it was very, very, very serious. For some people, Arangate rooms are just, I think a social, um, a social thing, or it's a rite of passage that South Indian people have to do. I'm not South Indian, I'm a Gujarati boy, but I developed the passion of Bhattanatim when I was very small. So, but for me, it's turned into something, I think a lot more higher than a hobby. In, I mean, when I was performing my Arangetram, um, the day was obviously mother's birthday. And um, the, previously, I mean, in the week, the four days of rehearsals and on the day of the Iron Gate obviously there's loads of tension, there's loads of nerves, there's loads of nerves, excitement, things, I mean obviously things went wrong in mine. I mean I had a monitor that blew up one hour before before the performance. I mean we were running one hour late, people were waiting outside, I was still getting ready and there's all this commotion. But then when it started, we did the puja, then musicians sat down, the whole thing started. There was an ambience that slowly, slowly created. Now, maybe, maybe that's because it was mother's birthday, mother made it kind of, made things calm down, which is what I think. Then when I got onto stage, I felt a lot more comfortable than I was before. I mean, obviously the initial nerves were there, but then I just felt this connection. There was something there which was guiding me. And I'm a very, I, I am a very spiritual dancer. I mean, I liked to feel the divine. I mean, that's what's special about our, our dance form, Paritanatyam. It's almost like it's sixth sense, you know I mean? We have, 
a spirit, if you believe it, which guides you. Um, so that was, and, and also my, um, my guest, my chief guest, um, Srimati Chitaleka Bolar, who spoke, she even said, I mean, there was a special ambience that was created for me to perform. And she also noticed that. So I think she and other people that noticed it, I mean, I felt it, but only after people started saying it. I mean, we were discussing after their engagement with my parents at home. I was like, it was special for me to dance on this day. And I did thank, thank my mom for giving the idea. But yeah, I mean, spirituality in dance is also an important thing. Yes, you can have your aesthetics. Yes, you could be a, a dancer with um, the world's best technique. But if you don't have that longing for God or that feeling of God, you know, there's a special feeling when you do Bharatanatyam. I mean, you have to be in a zone. That zone is very important. I mean, when I, when I was in India for my gap year, I had the opportunity to dance in Chidambaram, which is like um, when Lord Nataraja himself danced and where there's a Nataraja temple. Uh, where thousands and well millions of dancers come there from around the world, Indian dancers. And um, I performed there with my mentor, Shijit Nambiar, and his students. And um, we had the opportunity to dance in front of the Sandhidi of Nataraja. And that was such a special experience. I mean, you, I just felt like Nataraja was there, and he was just molding my body into all these positions. And I know when you dance, you feel tension. You feel oh, your body's working. You feel tired. You feel the, the blood pumping. I just felt so light. I felt like he was guiding my body. So um, dancing in Chidambaram is, I think, after you've danced there, dance becomes uh, the, the meaning of Indian dance or Bharatanatyam becomes something else. Because I think it's like a, almost like a filter. Once you've gone through that filter, you've, you take dance to another level. And that's especially what's happened. I mean, I, I visited there once to, um, during the um, Shivaratri festival. The second time was during the performance. And I think my dancing life changed a lot since then. I mean, the amount of concentration I did on my dancing, it was a different level of concentration. I can't explain what it was. Maybe it's spiritual. Maybe it's um, me dancing a lot more cautiously. Or, um, but I think something, there was a transition. and. Um, I think only when you have these, um, how do I explain it, uh, realization, uh, spirit spiritual realization, is when you realize, OK, this is not just moving. This is not just about dance. This is more than that. So I think I like that. I like working towards that. And I think that's the speciality of what we do. Can you tell us um, how it was different when you did a boogie boogie competition and won? Oh, God. Uh, Boogie Woogie was obviously a different, I mean, that's a whole different um, episode, Boogie Woogie, Arangit, Trim, But I did Boogie Woogie in 2007, which was three years ago. And I was a sweet, bubbly, innocent 16, 17-year-old. And I'd won it in, two yeah, January 2007. Um, I mean, that's also a very co commercial platform. It's Bollywood dance. I mean, I didn't do Bollywood. I did Bharatanatyam. I did a semi-classical semi -classical fusion. but. Um, See, dancing in front of a camera for TV, and I mean, that's all very, very, very quick, very, very flashy, very, very attractive. I could do that, no problem. Anyone could do that. I could teach, I could teach anybody um, some kind of move and some routine, and they'll, they'll be attractive and uh, do the right thing, pull the right expression. That's very um, this level dancing. I don't really see uh, m well, myself a continuity in that. I mean, there's not a lot of sat satisfaction that you get from it. From Paradhanatyam, there's such a different satisfaction level. I mean, obviously, there's the divine. That's very, very enriching, if you believe in it. But um, I don't know. Every time I even, even if I do adavus, I feel like I've achieved something. Or I've, my body's working. Or, and when the body works, the brain works. So when the brain and the body works, and then the brain starts working. And then you start ch channeling all these energies, if you believe in it. I know many people that don't believe in energies and divine and um, atheists, but I think, yeah, it's a different thing. I mean, this is a very divine, very high art. And Boogie Woogie was very, I mean, I was a 17-year-old kid. I wanted to do what everyone else was doing. I also did, I also did a bit of Bollywood, hip hop, street dance, um, jazz, modern, contemporary. When I was in my college, I was in my college's um, contemporary and modern dance company for two years. And um, that was, obviously, it's a different level. But I think when you go. It, and it's not also about growing up. I think it's maturity, how mature you are. I think it, um, 
is important. Yeah, for those who want to pursue it. And I think if you want to do Arangetram, my advice is that once you dedicate yourself to doing it, give you 100% and you'll never be be taken aback or um, if you persevere, you'll, you'll, you'll see the results. So all of you that want to do Arangetram, good luck to you. I did mine and I'm very happy. Thank you so much.